Susan experienced great alarm when she initially noticed peculiar holes in her baby's nose. She had no idea of the potential danger or the cause but quickly sought the truth. Consulting a doctor on the same day. Susan was taken aback when she learned that the situation was much more serious than she had initially thought. The doctor. Realizing the severity. Promptly contacted the police. Leaving Susan abandoned without explanation, following multiple tests on her child. The doctor abruptly summoned the police and abruptly left the room. Leaving Susan alone. The gravity of the situation began to dawn on Susan. Causing her anxiety. As she grasped the severity of the doctor's findings. She turned red and felt apprehensive. Especially when she realized that the doctor had locked the door behind her, desperate to leave the room. Susan pounded on the door with all her strength. After a series of serious bangs. The door gave way. Revealing medical staff who attempted to keep her inside at all costs. While Susan listened to the doctor's account of the findings. She felt faint and collapsed to the ground. The mystery deepened, why did the police need to be involved? And what were the holes in her baby's nose, upon waking up? Susan. Initially unaware of the situation due to her baby crying. Went about her routine thinking it was a typical morning. It wasn't until she prepared her baby's milk that she noticed something amiss and was on the verge of screaming. As a single parent in her forties. Susan had hoped for a successful date after numerous unsuccessful attempts in the past. She had put considerable effort into getting ready for their first in-person meeting. Eager for a positive outcome, however. Things took an unexpected turn. Susan had met the man online. Aware that it was a long shot. But decided to meet up with him. The date was unremarkable. With the man showing little interest in discussing her baby from a past relationship. Uncertain about seeing him again. Susan discovered something unusual about her baby. Roy. The morning after the date, Roy seemed to have a discomfort in his nose. Constantly scratching it. Upon closer inspection. Susan was alarmed to find tiny holes covering the inside of Roy's nose. Digging into his skin. Pressing on them made Roy cry. Indicating that something was evidently wrong. Susan pondered if an insect had bitten or crawled into her baby's nose overnight. But she couldn't fathom such behavior from a bug, searching online. Susan concluded that no bug could have caused this. It had to be something more concerning. As she scrutinized Roy's nose. Confusion set in, the holes weren't merely tiny. There was something inside them. Although she couldn't identify it. She was certain of its presence, the holes and whatever was inside seemed rigid. Determined to address the issue. Susan came up with an idea. She decided to use tweezers to try and extract whatever it was in her baby's nose. Heading to the bathroom to retrieve them, before delving into her baby's nose with the tweezers. Susan hesitated. Realizing she lacked a clear understanding of what she was dealing with. Recognizing the potential risk of making things worse. She grappled with her aversion to doctors. Susan generally preferred handling matters independently and only sought professional help when absolutely necessary. Despite her reluctance. She acknowledged that this situation warranted a doctor's expertise. As her baby's health was at stake. Taking a leap. She made the decision to call the doctor, the doctor's office arranged a semi-emergency appointment for the same afternoon. Assuring Susan they would see her and baby Roy by the end of the day. Meanwhile. The doctor instructed Susan to consider any recent changes that could have caused the issue. Emphasizing the importance of identifying anything out of the ordinary, agreeing to the doctor's request. Susan hung up the phone and pondered the potential causes. She thought back over the past week. Considering various possibilities. Recalling a recent hike through the forest with Roy. Susan wondered if he might have touched something unusual. Like a mushroom or contaminated moss. However. As she contemplated. 
the hike didn't seem to make much sense. Given its popularity among others who would likely have reported similar issues. Susan. An average person with routine habits. Struggled to pinpoint any significant deviations. As she reflected on her mundane lifestyle, working from home. Occasional hikes. And visits to the local coffee shop, Susan found herself at a loss. However. A sudden realization struck her, something else had been out of the ordinary, Susan had gone on a date the night before. Engaging in prolonged online conversations with a man. She had decided to take the plunge and try dating again. Excited about the possibility of finding a soul mate. Susan hoped the date would go well. However. Things took an unexpected turn from the outset of the date. Susan sensed something off about the man. He appeared disinterested in her and her baby. Almost displaying a disdain for her single motherhood. Yet. In contradictory moments. He would exhibit signs of genuine interest. Creating a peculiar dynamic. The entire date felt strange. But Susan couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to it, reflecting on their interactions. Susan questioned why the man had contacted her in the first place. Examining their messages. She noticed a lack of genuine liking on his part. Realizing she might have been a bit desperate and not thinking clearly. Susan wondered if the man could be connected to the mysterious issue with her baby's nose, although Susan couldn't fathom how he might be involved. Considering they hadn't gotten physical. And she hadn't contacted him since the previous night. Doubts lingered. If he had played a role. Wouldn't he have said something or reached out to her? Uncertain. Susan headed to Roy's doctor appointment. Continuing to ponder the situation during the drive. Unfortunately. No new insights emerged. At the doctor's office. Susan sat in her car. Trying to come up with more answers but found herself at a loss. Taking a deep breath to calm her nerves. She entered the doctor's office. Hoping for clarity regarding her baby's mysterious condition, Susan entered the doctor's office with her baby and signed in. Expecting a lengthy wait. However. Things took an unexpected turn as baby Roy. With the plainly visible holes in his nose. Became the center of attention in the waiting room. The shocking sight captivated everyone around. Drawing their curiosity initially oblivious to the growing interest. Susan soon noticed the stares and whispers as people couldn't resist their curiosity. Even the children in the room were eager to take a closer look. Though their parents held them back. The atmosphere shifted. With everyone seemingly forgetting their own medical concerns as they wanted to know what was happening with baby Roy, when the doctor emerged to call in the next patient. The collective decision was unanimous, Susan's baby should be seen first due to the seriousness of his condition. Grateful yet somewhat put off by the attention. Susan acknowledged their concern. Thinking she could wait. However. The doctor had a different perspective once inside the office. The doctor examined Roy's nose and was visibly shocked. He had never encountered anything like this before and couldn't recall such a case. Even in his medical books. There was no mention of a similar condition. Realizing the complexity of the situation. The doctor made calls to reroute his waiting patients to other on-call doctors. Prioritizing Roy's urgent case recognizing the gravity of the situation. The doctor ordered tests for Susan. While awaiting the results. He delved into an intense study of Roy's nose. Oddly. Despite the earlier cries. Baby Roy seemed calm and unaffected as the doctor worked to unravel the mystery. However. He no longer felt anything, his entire nose had become completely numb. To the point that there was no pain even when the doctor applied pressure. This raised concerns for the doctor. Who continued to examine Roy's nose. Disappointingly. The initial test results yielded no conclusive findings, there were still additional tests that could be conducted. But the doctor required Susan's permission. 
understanding that it would demand a significant amount of her time. Susan consented to the tests. And as they awaited the results. The doctor. Still without any useful findings. Decided to share pictures of Roy's nose on a medical forum. He hoped that another doctor might have encountered a similar case before, while Susan took a break in the bathroom and allowed her baby to sleep. The doctor received a private message on the forum. Excitedly. He opened it anticipating a solution. But to his dismay, the news was both terrible and urgent. Another doctor had encountered this condition before. And swift action was needed to prevent a potentially serious problem for everyone. Especially Susan, upon receiving the urgent message. The doctor anxiously awaited the test results. They arrived almost immediately after he had read the forum message. The results confirmed the other doctor's assessment. Sending a chill down his spine that he left his office with a sense of urgency. And chaos ensued in the medical facility. When Susan returned from the bathroom. The condition of Roy's nose had worsened significantly. With the holes now spreading beyond their initial area. Susan's anxiety escalated as fear gripped her. But she understood the urgency of showing the doctor the worsening situation. The dilemma arose when she returned to the doctor's office. Only to find it empty. Pondering her next move. She suddenly heard commotion behind her, the door she had just passed through was now locked from the outside. Panic set in as the doctor's voice outside revealed that he had called the police, confused and desperate for an explanation. Susan pleaded through the door. But the medical staff remained tight-lipped. No one provided answers. Instead, they urged her to stay calm until the police arrived. This response only fueled Susan's anxiety, especially concerning her baby's condition. Was it so severe that her child's life was at risk that a barrage of thoughts overwhelmed Susan? Transitioning from fear to anger. Frustrated by the lack of communication, she began kicking the door in desperation. Determined to break free. The doctors on the other side shouted at her to stop. But their voices were drowned out by her relentless pounding. After a few forceful kicks. The door's lock gave way. Swinging open dramatically. Chaos ensued as the medical staff recoiled in shock, breathing heavily. Susan stood defiantly on the other side. While her actions were fueled by desperation. She needed answers urgently. The doctor instructed everyone to step back. Cautioning Susan to keep her distance. The fear evident on the doctor's face conveyed the severity of the situation. Leaving Susan with an ominous sense of what lay ahead for both her and her baby despite the escalating tension. Susan remained resolute. She insisted that she wouldn't stay back unless given answers. However. Before her doctor could respond, three armed officers stormed into the building. Their attention fixed on Susan. The doctor frantically pointed at her, shouting that she was the one. All three officers drew their pistols, aiming them carefully at Susan, who began to feel faint that I in a desperate plea. Susan raised her hands in surrender, nearly on the verge of tears and begged them to reveal what was going on. Observing the worsening condition of the baby's nose, the police instructed her to stay back. One officer calmly explained that they would provide all the details but emphasized the immediate need for isolation agreeing to the terms. Susan sternly warned that she wouldn't hesitate to break open another door for answers. Driven by terror and the lack of information, retreating into the doctor's office, the door closed behind her. Susan witnessed the staff entering with heavy cleaning materials. Sanitizing everything, the floors, walls, and doors, finally. The doctor approached Susan to disclose the situation. He apologized for not explaining earlier. Revealing that the fear stemmed from a rare and severe flesh-eating virus. Adhering to unprecedented procedures. He felt remorseful for the distress caused. However, 
There was more to the revelation the doctor discussed Susan's activities the day before, an innocent hike and an unfortunate date. Fortunately, the bad date wasn't the source of the problem. Instead, it was more likely that the baby had come into contact with an infected plant during their outdoor excursion, uncertain of which plant had caused the infection. Susan recounted the route they had taken during the hike and shared any relevant observations with the police and the doctor. Her primary concern, however, was the treatment plan for the baby. Would they be able to treat him? Or would the virus continue to ravage his nose? Fortunately, the hospital had the necessary medication. But the baby had to undergo isolation, the police became involved not only to discuss Susan's hike but also due to the panic triggered by her doctor's reaction upon seeing her outside the isolation room. Despite the chaos, the priority was to prevent further infections. Susan and Roy were safely transported to a specialized hospital where they could undergo isolation and receive treatment for the virus affecting the baby's nose. The medication available at the hospital successfully halted the virus's spread. And within a few days, the condition began to reverse. However, the mystery surrounding the infected plant persisted. Officers cordoned off the trail, conducted an extensive search, and eventually identified a non-native plant responsible for Susan's ordeal. It was uprooted and disposed of, with no new cases reported. And after a month of treatment, Susan made a full recovery. She was once again ready to embark on dates. Grateful for the resolution of the ordeal and the eradication of the plant that had caused the infection. Let's continue. A young boy named Lucas Adam, just eight years old, found himself lost at the airport during a family trip to Universal Orlando Resort. The excitement of the vacation, organized by his mother Evelyn, had filled Lucas with anticipation. The family, comprising several siblings, uncles, aunts, cousins, and grandparents, eagerly prepared for the outing dot on the day of departure. Lucas's restlessness intensified. He excitedly spoke about the things he wanted to see, creating a noisy chatter that wore out his family during the van ride to the airport. Despite fervent prayers and Evelyn's occasional threats, Lucas remained lively. Upon reaching the airport and moving to the plane boarding zone, the bustling crowd overwhelmed them amidst the chaos. Lucas inadvertently let go of his mother's hand and became swallowed up by the sea of people. It was at this point that he realized he was lost on the plane. But to his dismay, nobody paid him any attention. Despite his tears and distress, the passengers seemed indifferent, the narrative pauses. Inviting viewers to subscribe, like, and share the video to brighten others' days and inspire kindness. The story is set to continue with a woman taking action. And an important lesson awaits at the end of the video, Lucas hesitated before giving in to panic. Ashamed of getting lost. He silently rejoined his family as they headed towards a plane entrance. The air hostess assumed he was part of the group she had just waved in. Allowing him to board without questioning, once on the plane and comfortably seated. Lucas began looking around for his family. Familiar with the dynamics of plane travel. He knew they could be assigned seats anywhere. Content with his window seat. He felt secure. Confident that his mother would scold him if he unfastened his seatbelt, however. When his mother didn't appear after some time. Lucas decided to seek her out. Wandering the plane's rows. He went unnoticed until fear overcame him. And he started crying peering into faces, hoping for recognition. He received only impatience from one man who grumbled. Get out of my face. Kid. After futile attempts, Lucas returned to his seat by the window, quietly sobbing. The man sitting next to him, disinterested, focused on his phone. It wasn't until a compassionate woman, 
initially mistaken for his mom due to her many children, noticed his tears. She approached him, asking why he was crying, but received no response, determined to help. The woman requested the man to switch seats with her, taking the seat in front of Lucas. The woman sat beside Lucas, who finally opened up about his predicament. Tears streamed down his face as he confessed. I can't find my parents. Concerned. The woman asked where they were. But Lucas shook his head. Indicating he didn't know, Lucas explained that he had mistaken her for his mom and followed her onto the plane. Asking if she was also headed to Florida. Amused. The woman clarified they were going to California. It dawned on her that Lucas was on the wrong plane. Bound for California. While his parents likely boarded the flight to Florida, realizing the mix-up. The woman reacted with a whistle. Meanwhile. The Florida-bound plane was detained at the airport. Realizing they were missing eight-year-old Lucas. His mother. Blaming herself. Sobbed inconsolably while family members searched the airport for him. On the California-bound plane. The woman. Unsure how to resolve the situation. Reached out to a flight attendant. After explaining the situation to the pilot. They decided to attempt contacting Lucas's family at the airport. Despite having traveled some distance. The plan was to rectify the mistake upon landing back at the airport. A thorough search confirmed that Lucas was not on the Florida-bound plane. Allowing it to take off without him. The family still at the airport hoped to locate him several hours later an airport official delivered the long-awaited news lucas had boarded the wrong plane relief washed over the family and they were joyfully reunited with lucas lucas's mother especially grateful for her son's safe return vowed to always listen attentively to his stories and hold his hand tightly to prevent such a situation from occurring again the important lesson in the story awaits, highlighting the significance of communication and attentiveness.